Good morning, atheists, agnostics, skeptics, free thinkers, whatever you like to call yourself, you are welcome here. At Seattle Atheist Church, we call ourselves an atheist church because you will never hear anything supernatural talked about. Uh, today we are talking about free thinker children. Now notice that I say uh, free thinker children as opposed to raising atheist children. I place a very high value on allowing people to come to their own conclusions. And children are basically um, just people, after all. The people in your life, especially children, may pick up many different belief systems and try them on, and sometimes discard them along the way. We want to make sure we give people the freedom to do just that. For this talk, I'm going to be referencing a book called Raising Free Thinkers. The preface by Dale McGowan uh, lists seven important things for the non-religious parent to do. Okay, so this is some things that, these are some things that religion traditionally helps people with, but he's giving a kind of a secular uh, perspective on them. So the first thing is to encourage your children to have a wide circle of empathy. I grew up being told that we all have one father and we are all brothers and sisters because of that. The non-religious counterpart for this is to feel that we are all connected because we're all part of the same humanity. And if you have animals as part of your, of your family, you might even say um, that we are connected with all conscious beings. As part of your cosmopolitan point of view of things, children should learn about many religions, uh, all the religions of the world. So one thing is that learning about other religions goes a long way towards helping children become atheists, since after all, they can't all be correct. And also, you want, when your child turns about 16, and they're going through a kind of difficult time in their life, you don't want somebody to catch them off guard with a question, have you heard about Jesus? Have you heard the good news? You want them to be able to say, yes, yes, I'm very familiar with that. So develop moral reasoning and the questioning of authority. Those two things go together. Children should learn that rules are made by human beings and that rules can be changed. They should be able to understand the reasons for rules. We want to help our children be familiar with death because it's children who've been completely sheltered from death who are more susceptible to things um, such as the funeral that Stephen and I attended where the pastor talked about the pearly gates and the road made of gold. Um, for uh, other children, children who are familiar with, for example, just having pets and seeing their pets die, they have a better understanding of death and don't need to be comforted in that same way. Okay, so Dale McGowan, who's one of the authors of this book says, do not label children. It gives them the freedom to label or to not label themselves when they get older. You don't say that a child is a Democrat or a Republican, so why should you say that a child is a Muslim or Catholic? I personally um, want to just um, push back a little on that and say children are experimenting with labeling themselves all the time as part of developing an identity. So a child will announce that they're the greatest Star Wars fan ever or, you know, call me unicorn because I'm a believer in unicorns. And I want a child to feel comfortable saying that they're an atheist. I want them to know it's something that they can be. Normalizing disbelief, okay? The best thing that you can do is model for yourself that it's okay to say that you're an atheist, it's not something to whisper about or hide. And then finally, you wanna promote curiosity in your children. And the, uh, most of the rest of the talk is about that part. Okay, so there's seven basic ideas in that preface that he says he's going to talk about. In some ways, those are kind of like memes, ideas that if they catch on in the culture would really support families in raising atheist children. And I wanna talk about three, just three of the original um, seven atheist memes that I came up with in a talk on memes uh, that we did here at Atheist Church. So Dawkins says 
that um, means so support the spread of religion. Uh, in his book, Unweaving the Rainbow, he talks about ideas which spread among people like a virus. And he talks about specifically religious ideas that support religion, okay? But I would like us to come up with seven that support um, atheism. And I'm gonna just stick to three because it's kind of um, to keep it short in this talk. So the first one is atheists need shortcuts to get their message across. Christians have John 3.16, and at a time, my children um, used to go to this after-school program, and all of these kids were coming up and have, you know, do you know Jesus, and telling them that they're going to go to hell, and all of that. And so children need a shortcut uh, in the same way that Christians have that shortcut. And it's just not the time to start Socratic uh, dialogue on your seven-year-old playmates, right? So what's more reasonable than saying, uh, atheists believe in good, good works in non-mysterious ways. So I uh, would like to teach that as a meme in our culture. And this one is extremely controversial and it's why I did not shy away from it. Um, insist that atheism is a religion. Because religions are taught to children, when religions are taught to children, like in school, insist that atheism be treated on equal footing. Okay, so the kids are making posters about themselves, heralds, that kind of activity, and a teacher says, well, atheism is not a religion. I want you to feel um, free to be pretty aggressive about it. it is a worldview. It is as much a part of my religion as my Catholicism, you know, that I was born into. Uh, no one should be allowed to tell a child atheists believe in nothing because it just isn't true. I've never met an atheist who believed in nothing. Children should be taught in school, all children, that atheists usually use scientific naturalism to explain why things happen, and, that, and they use secular ethics to decide which things are good and bad. And by the way, I believe that if that were taught in comparative religions in high school, that probably about 80% of the teenagers would become atheists instantly. They would say, well, that sounds reasonable. I need to think about that. Number three, use the label atheist. We want to normalize that word. 70% roughly of the world um, profess belief in theism. So why are we afraid, or why are you, or why am I afraid to use the word atheist? I don't believe that everything that happens is part of a divine plan. I don't believe that a magical being is going to defy the laws of nature to save us from ourselves. And I don't believe that someone else can die for my sins. I believe there are scientifically natural reasons that things happen. And so um, I want to be able to you know, use the word atheist and um, have re a ready explanation for what that means when somebody says, well, what do you believe in? How liberating for children just to be able to say, I'm an atheist, in the same way that they say, I live on Acorn Street. Part two, how to raise a free thinker. Children are naturally curious, but it is up to adults to aid in their intellectual development. Here are some ideas from raising a free thinker. When your children ask you questions, don't just answer them. That shuts down their curiosity. Instead, return the question and give them space to come up with a hypothesis. Model how to be a lifelong learner by saying, maybe tomorrow when we go to the library, we can get some books on that. You can answer with an obvious fib, one that causes them to protest, and then ask them how they know that that's not true. You can do the question chain with them so that if they just pick up their phone and ask Siri or they Google it and come back with a quick answer, you can ask them, hmm, I wonder how they figured that out. All of these techniques teach children to question and to think rather than to accept easy answers. At Seattle Atheist Church, we advocate teaching critical thinking directly. 
The books by Linda Elder are excellent for this, for both children and adults. They have books for children and books for adults. And if you want to check them out, uh, you can do that at criticalthinking.org. Okay, we'll have some talks just specifically on uh, those materials. They're super awesome. Now, in the book, Raising Free Thinkers, she, has, she talks a lot about activities, um, and most of them come from the secular summer camp called Camp Quest, which is for children. And they help children to understand their place in the universe and in time. Most of us are familiar with the Carl Sagan calendar, and things like that help dispel gullibility around the idea that the universe was created specifically for man. I'm gonna give you one example that I thought was really great. Go out onto a huge empty parking lot and place a soccer down, ball down in the middle. Now, that represents the sun. 10 paces away, place a small bead. That's Mercury. Nine steps away, another bead for Venus. Seven steps away, the Earth, an inch away, the moon. Now pause and ponder that from the Earth to the moon is as far away as any human has ever been. Now, 121 steps away, place a large marble for Saturn and talk about Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Ask the children, how far to the nearest star to our sun? It's called Proxima Centauri. And let them guess at how many steps. Let them guess and guess. They will never guess. It is about 8 million steps, 4,000 miles. I personally believe that if every human being on this planet adopted the, that perspective, then the idea of nation fighting nation would become absurd. We are all on this tiny planet. We are one tribe called Earthling. Ask your children what that perspective might do to change the world. Part three, how to raise good people. This book suggests five steps. The most important is to model decency. Your child learns far more from what he or she sees you doing than from your words. What does your child see you doing? Listening respectfully to the ideas of others, learning about the issues that you say matter to you, taking direct action to solve social problems, and modeling drinking milk from a glass and not from the jug. Whatever you do teaches volumes more than your words. Explain why you do the things you do. And praise your, and ask your children to explain themselves too. Praise their efforts and make sh acknowledgement when they do good things. I noticed that you gave the dog a drink of water at the park. What made you think of that? How thoughtful. And also take into consideration your child's developmental um, level. So you can say, I, to a really small child, I know it's hard to share the swings, but um, you know, Joe also wants it to take a turn. Allow your children to participate in the decision making and responsibilities of family life. Should we have bread with our soup? If we use the bread now, we can not have sandwiches later. Talk to them about making decisions and accepting the consequences. What about when children are mean to each other. Ask them to explain why their behavior was hurtful and to acknowledge their mistakes. I'd like to see if there's a pattern, what we can do to interrupt the pattern. What will you do differently next time so that it doesn't happen again? Apologize sincerely if possible, but sometimes it isn't possible to apologize if somebody doesn't feel ready, okay? And also, sometimes when a child seeks forgiveness from another child, the other child just isn't ready to accept the apology. And I would say um, that those are lessons for a child to learn, to be graceful in those situations. Tell them you did the right thing by seeking to make amends. 
and somebody is upset right now, that's okay. You'll teach them de-escalation. The book says, make amends. Try to find a stroke that was equal to the blow. If a child forgot to walk the dog and now it's dark outside, they might come up with the idea that they can brush the dog, thereby giving the dog some special attention. We are asking children to take real responsibilities for their impact on the world. Teach them that what they do matters. And that forgiveness is not a magic thing that is given by someone, you know, who's been dead for 2,000 years, but that it is something that actually has to happen in the real world because human beings have done the work to make a difference. Okay, final section. What about celebrations as an atheist family? The bottom line here comes down to this. The more comfortable you are with your atheism, the more, the easier these things will be and the easier other people will feel around you when you're celebrating your holidays and your celebrations. At our house, we say gratefuls at dinner time, and on special occasions, we follow that up by making toasts. If you are, um, there are secular, there are groups of secular Jews if you'd like to celebrate your Jewish traditions. And uh, other people may choose to have a Yule tree with presents under it. And you can hang stockings by the chimney and talk about um, the gifts that you've asked your imaginary friend to bring you. Make special occasions opportunities to think about those who are less fortunate than you. And also, at last Christmas, we gave a talk on how to celebrate Christmas, and we talk, talked about the fact that a lot of secular music has something to do with bells. So I re recommend that silver bells can become an atheist symbol at the holidays. What about the big things, birth and death and marriage? The same thing. Just choose things that have meaning to you and leave out those things that cause you cognitive dissonance. I love the idea of talking about a slice of life at a funeral. That's an idea from the book Thoughts on Death and Grieving. And any major ceremony can always include the song Imagine by John Lennon. But think outside the box. I attended a marriage ceremony where the groom boogied up the aisle to the song You Sexy Thing by Hot Chocolate. And trust me that it's going to be more beautiful than anything you can imagine. When you raise free thinkers, the children will neither learn to ignore cognitive dissonance nor learn hypocrisy, but grow strong on a diet of reality. So I will end today's talk the way I always do. Atheists believe in good because good works in non-mysterious ways.